Hello everybody, it's been a while since we've had a story, so I'm going to read next week's story to you today, um, but I just wanted to let the grown-ups know that we've been looking at poetry this week, um, and a particular poem where there's onomatopoeia in, um, of the firework sounds, and you might be able to see behind me, um, we've been writing them, so words like whiz, bang, pop, crackle, sit, tick, rattle, boom, zip, zap, zigzag um, and we've been acting out having a little bonfire and there's been lots of lovely autumnal art going on and we're going to carry that on next week as well. We've been looking at the bags and the things the children found um, and it's going to link beautifully with our story for next week which is After the Storm by Nick Butterworth. It's quite a long story so I'm going to try and read quickly. Um, so it's not too long a bedtime story for you guys. Okay, we've talked about this a little bit in Donaldson, how there is, Percy is a park keeper, so he helps look after a park and care for the garden, um, but also the animals. And then there's a storm just like that day before the holiday, uh, which was very stormy, lots of rain, lots of wind, um, and something happens and he has to, has to solve it. So let's see. Percy the park keeper couldn't sleep. Outside his hut, a great storm was raging. With thunder and lightning and pouring rain, Percy wasn't frightened by the thunder and he loved to watch the lightning as it lit up the whole park. He didn't even mind the rain, but there was one thing that Percy didn't like. He didn't like the wind. It blew down fences in the park. It ripped branches off the trees. He didn't like it one bit. Oh dear, he sighed as he watched from his window. The wind tugged at the trees, making them creak and groan. It looks like I'm going to be busy tomorrow. He pulled his pillow over his head and he tried to get to sleep. Percy was up early in the morning. The wind had stopped and the sky was clear. Percy loaded up his wheelbarrow with all the things he would need to make repairs and clear up after the storm. Then he set off to inspect the damage. He felt happy as he took deep breaths of the fresh, clean air. Perhaps the damage wouldn't be too bad. Oh dear. But he was wrong. Something dreadful had happened. A great big oak tree that had stood by itself on top of a little hill had been blown over by the storm. The giant tree had been one of Percy's favourites and now it looked very sad lying on its side with its mass of tangly roots sticking up into the air. But it wasn't just one of Percy's favourite trees. Some of Percy's animal friends lived there and now their homes were wrecked. Percy hurried up to the fallen tree. So it's their habitat, it's part of where they live, it's their home. The animals were gathered by the tree looking cross and unhappy. When they saw Percy, everyone started talking at once. Percy sat down with his friends. He listened as they told how the storm had brought down the great tree. And now we have nowhere to live, said the badger. Some of us lived in the tree and some of us lived under it, but we're all homeless now. Some of the rabbits looked close to tears and the fox was very sniffy. Percy passed him his handkerchief and the fox blew his nose. Percy stood up. We'll just have to find you somewhere else to live, he said. Come on, everybody, jump into my wheelbarrow. The animals felt better now that Percy was with them. First, he took them to the pine wood, but nobody wanted to live there. Oh, it's too dark, squeaked the mice. It's too gloomy, said the hedgehog. So Percy took them to the shrubbery, but nobody wanted to live in the shrubbery either. There's no big trees, complained the squirrels. There's no big roots, moaned the rabbits. Never mind, said Percy. We'll try across the stream. He's very patient, isn't he? <gasps> okay. Percy began to push the heavy wheelbarrow over a little bridge that crossed the stream. But as he got to the middle of the bridge, two things happened. Percy stumbled and the wheelbarrow decided to see what it would be like to be a boat. Splash! We're going to be making boats next week and testing them in the um, water tray. Suddenly, Percy and his friends found themselves drifting downstream to where the stream opened out into a lake. 
Percy stood up and looked around. Oh, we'll have to paddle back to the shore, he said. But then something caught his eye. No, wait, said Percy. Let's paddle across to the other side of the lake. I have an idea. The animals looked puzzled. What was Percy up to? Slowly, they paddled the wheelbarrow across the lake. That, talking again, that's reminded me of the pepper book. Um, I will get it because I can see it. But Donaldson love, Pepper goes boating and they had a pedalo in that book. Um, you can see it there. And we were talking about all the different ways um, boats can move and how you have to cycle that one to push the water. And that just reminded me, Percy's using his spade to push the water. Here we are, said Percy. The squirrels jumped ashore and tied up the wheelbarrow to the roots of an enormous hollow tree that grew by the water's edge. Now this is my plan, said Percy. Everyone gathered around us, gathered around Percy as he explained his idea. Is everybody clear? And everyone nodded. Then let's get to work. Oh, they're plotting. Like in the gunpowder plot, I wonder what they're planning. Hopefully nothing with fireworks. Let's have a look. They began by unloading all Percy's tools and the planks of wood from the wheelbarrow. Then Percy explained exactly what he wanted each one to do. He showed the badger how to use a saw and he showed the squirrels how to knock in nails. The fox drilled holes and the rabbit screwed in screws. The mice were kept busy fetching and carrying for everyone else. At lunchtime, they took a short break to share some of Percy's peanut butter sandwiches and then they got busy again. At long last, their work was finished. A very tired Percy stood back to admire their handiwork. Now the squirrels had a brand new home and so did the mice and the rabbits had a new home. I love these pictures. It reminds me of the Bramley Hedge um, trees where the little mice are in. And so did the badger and the fox and the hedgehog. In fact, every one of Percy's friends had a fine new place to live. Isn't that lovely? They've worked together to make their new homes. They're neighbours, aren't they? They live right next to each other. Well done, everyone, said Percy. This is the best tree house I've ever seen. What about you, Percy, called the badger? Aren't you going to join us? Percy smiled. I think I'll stick to my old hut, he said. Besides, said Percy, taking an acorn out of his pocket, I still have one job left to do back at the little hut. Oh, I wonder... If you can infer, what would that job be? He's holding a little acorn. Mm. I think he might go and plant it because from that, an oak tree will grow. And then the best thing about this book is it's got, I don't know if I can show it on the video. Oh, I can just about. It's got a beautiful picture of the tree and all, it's incredible. It's like a big poster. And it's got all of the details, all of the little balconies and the little hidey holes and there's the, even a bridge and all of the places that the animals can live in the new tree. And you will get to look at that. And, you know, I feel inspired. I do have at home an enormous Bramley Hedge book, which I'm sure the grown-ups remember. Um, and it has all of the trees in and you can see all of the houses and the little beds and it's gorgeous. So I'm, I think I might bring that in to show you next week. So that's our story. We're going to carry on learning about autumn. We are doing splatter painting next week and we're making paintbrushes with all the things we brought in. And we'll be splatting some paint like fireworks as well. Um, and also it's children in need, isn't it? We've got lots going on. Okay, have a lovely weekend. Bye.